Okay, let's talk about enumeration types. Basically, the concept is that we have a set of values, and we want to collect those values under one particular name. And that's, in fact, what an enumeration type is. So let's do an example of that. Let's go into Visual Studio, and we will create a new project. That new project will be a console app, and it will be a demo of enumeration, like so. All right, so there's my code, and I have this idea, for whatever reason, that I want to represent this idea of color. And color is made up of red, green, and blue. All right, so those are constant values associated with a, a larger idea, which in this case is color. So uh, the thing, first thing you might think of is, well, we need to represent those values in code, and so they need the data type. So you could say, for example, that uh, you've got an integer red, and it's set equal to 100. Um, so I'm representing red as the integer value 100. Um, not that that's particularly important. It's essentially an arbitrary value. Uh, but it has to be represented as something. And of course, I would need something for the other colors as well. So I'll just arbitrarily, again, pick a number like so. All right, so now um, I've got my, th my three values red three values, red, green, and blue, and I've set them equal to an arbitrary integer. So my next step would then be to have something that somehow uh, is, uh, is representing those as a variable. All right? So I might say int paint equals, and I could set it equal to, for example, red. But as I look at this, I remember or I realize that this isn't quite what I want because that is, of course, a variable. And it would be possible in code to do something like this, to, and then, in other words, change the value of red. But I don't want that to be legal. I don't want that to be a possibility, because red itself uh, should not change. So this is an error, a conceptual error. Obviously, it's not a syntax error. So I say, OK, well, I don't want red to change. I don't want to be able to set red to green, because I want them to be different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make these constant. Oops. Like so. All right, so now I have the three values, and I can do a little bit of work here. And I do have an error now, which is what I wanted. Uh, it's an actual syntax error now, because uh, you're not allowed to change the value of red, as I have attempted to do here. So we'll get rid of that. All right, so um, now what we want to be able to do is to manipulate these values. And so conceptually, maybe what you'd like is you'd be able to have a variable, in this case paint, and you'd set it equal based on what the user asked for. So maybe I'll uh, do a write here, or a write, console write, and enter color, like so. Uh, and then we want to read that. And of course, anything we read from the console is going to be a string. So I'll set that equal to input. And then I'll say console uh, read 9. So whatever the, the human being, so to speak, types in there will be set. And now what I'd like to be able to do is I'd like to be able to say paint equals input. All right. Uh, well, the first thing, of course, you notice is that input is a string and paint is an int, uh, because that's the way we set it up here. So this isn't exactly what we want, but let's try uh, int.parse of input, for example. Okay, And then we will write that information back out. Uh, let's make that paint like so. Oops, that should be you. All right, uh, let's go ahead and run this. Make sure it's my startup project. And run it. And here we have the prompt, enter color. And so I put in something like red. And that just causes an exception to take place. Now, why is that? Well, 
The problem is that I have typed in a string, R-E-D, and attempted to convert that into an int, which is what paint is, obviously. So um, it has to be some sort of number. Well, I look at the code here, and I can see that red is 100. So let's try that. So enter color, 100. And it says you entered, well, I need to say entered. But anyway, you entered uh, 100 as a color. Um, and that's also not what I'm looking for. And of course, the problem there is that the user is not uh, should should not be expected to know that you mean when you say 100 you mean red they should just see red uh, or green or blue or mix them together or whatever it might be uh, so let me change that all right so this isn't quite what we want uh, it's not reading in the way we like it's not uh, writing out the way we like we're still going to have to do some conversion even with an enumerated type but the the big problem is that these three values are not associated together in the way that we might like. Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, let's say I've added, I'm going to add some colors to my um, to my program. Let's let's put in an orange here. And of course, I have to come up with some arbitrary value for that to be because I, if it's a constant, it has to be set to something. Um, but in addition to that. Uh, as, I, as my program evolves, I also have this idea of needing to be able to represent fruit. And for fruit, I've got lemon and apple, and maybe I want orange. Uh, but I can't really use it here. I can't use it in fruit because I've already used it as a color. Or worse yet, let's say I didn't add to color, but I did create some fruit values. So in other words, I put this down here. I retype this format that a little bit better. Okay, so let's put the other ones in there. Lemon equals, and I set that to equal to an arbitrary value, which may or may not have anything to do with the arbitrary values that I've used for my colors, which is also an issue. So I'll just go ahead and set it equal to 100. Uh, and Apple. Now, in this admittedly uh, incredibly simple example, um, we, we, there's probably not a lot of confusion because of the way I've wrote it, th written it, that apple, or sorry, that orange is supposed to be a fruit. However, you can imagine if you have 100,000 lines of code, uh, it could be easy to lose sight of whether or not orange is a color or a fruit. And this is in a case where we have something very simple and very obvious. Like everybody knows what oranges, apples, and lemons are. Um, but imagine that you have a set of constants that isn't necessarily so clearly related. Okay, so the solution to this problem is to create an enumerated type. So enum color, and then you put your three values in curly braces, red, green, and blue. And enum fruit, uh, and the same concept. Now, one thing you'll notice is that I did not explicitly give these uh, values a numeric equivalent. In other words, where here is I had to say red is equal to 100 because if you create a constant, it has to have a value. Here, I'm allowing the compiler uh, to, to decide what it would like to represent as, as red in terms of a number because it's not important to me uh, for this particular uh, application. It's just uh, an arbitrary number. Now, it turns out that the way this is done is that the compiler, as you can possibly see there. The compiler will set uh, the first one to 0, and the next one to 1, and the next one to 2, and it will repeat that over here with fruit, lemon 0, apple 1, and orange 2. Um, and it doesn't matter that uh, those two, those sets of values intersect because they're of a different type. They're of color or of fruit. Okay. Uh, if you wanted, though, just to show that it's all possible, you could set a value to any of your enumerals. These things are called enumerals because they're uh, elements of a enumerated type. At any rate, uh, set it equal to 100, and then the next one would be 101. The next one after that would be 102. Uh, and this is done a lot when you want to use uh, bitwise flags, uh, which we're not going to be needing uh, for this particular situation. Uh, but certainly, you see a lot of the use of enumerated types with uh, bitmapped uh, values. All right, so for right now, I'll just go ahead and leave that out. 
All right, I would no longer need these constants because they are represented in my enumeration. And again, recognize those are constants. Those values cannot change. So you couldn't say, for example, I'll just put it down here. You couldn't say, for example, uh, color. You have to put the name of the uh, enumeration in front of it. You couldn't say color equals color red equals six, or even color red equals green, because that's uh, uh, that's illegal. Because again, these values are not variables; they are constant values. In the same way that int is made up of integer values one, two, three, four, five, you can no no more say color red equals green than you could say five equals six. Oops, sorry. 5 equals 6, that's just a nonsense statement. It doesn't make any sense. And it's exactly the same as with enumerated types. All right, so now that we've uh, made that change, how does our code change? Well, of course, we also don't need that set of constants. And in fact, I really don't even need those comments. So I'm going to get rid of them. Uh, all right, uh, and as we've talked about, you can't set colors equal to other colors. So that leaves, with, leaves me with my variable paint, and the data type for paint is no longer an int, but instead is the type that I just created up here. So it's color. All right, so now color, my variable uh, paint is of type color, and its initial value is color red. All right, uh, so now how do I deal with that as a value? And so again, we want to say inner color, all right, and we're going to read some string input in. And it goes, it's coming from the console uh, application or the console object. So this is always going to be a string. Uh, but now I don't want to parse that string as an int. I want to parse it uh, based on this type. So we have some operations available to enumerated types, and they're in a class called enum. All right, and so the first one that we'll talk about is enum.parse. All right, so uh, let's take a look. In fact, I'm, I'm going to start over so you can see this. All right, so as we look at the tooltip there, we see that enum.parse takes a type as a first parameter. So the question is, what is that? And as you can read here, it says type enum type. And what they're talking about in this case is this enum type color. Uh, so we might want to do something like this. Unfortunately, the compiler can't quite handle that. You can't pass a type as a parameter name, as a parameter value. So what you have to do is you say type of. So use a, a special operator that takes a type and turns it into information that can be passed at runtime. And so you'll see this type of color. And then here for the second parameter is the string that we're going to attempt to convert. And um, so that takes this input string, which is whatever the user typed in, and looks at the type color, which of course we know is red, green, and blue, and it attempts to make a match. And that's what this parse does. Now you'll notice that at this point it's still underlined or squiggle underlined in red because this is not syntactically legal. Uh, so what do we need to do? Well, if you look at the return type of parse, you can see that it actually returns an object. Okay, uh, but uh, as you as we can obviously see, paint is, is not just an object, it's specifically of type color. So what we have to do is we have to tell the compiler that we know that this is actually going to return a color. All right, so this, get rid of the tooltips there, uh, this is for the compiler to say, yes, we know that an object is being returned, but trust us, it's actually a, um, a color. And this is for the runtime to pass the appropriate information so parse can do its job. So you end up needing both of those things. Okay, so let's back off here just a little bit. And what do we got here? Uh, oh, I just need to put a semicolon. No, wait a minute. Oh, I need to put a semicolon here. It was missing a semicolon somewhere. All right, so let's see what happens. Run the code. And it says enter color, and so I'll put in red. And it said you entered red as a color. So in other words, success. This is exactly what we were looking for. This is sort of the what you might call the happy path. If the user gives good input, we get good output. So, so we're on our way. All right. Unfortunately, there is a drawback here. And if this parse is not legal, we already saw this when I typed in something that wasn't a color name, or sorry, wasn't an appropriate. Uh, 
for a number with integer, uh, this will actually blow up. And there's uh, several ways to get around the problem of bad user input. Um, one of the easiest is to do a try parse. I'm going to change this like so. And when you do a try parse, you have a slightly different set of parameters. And so for the purposes of seeing what those are, let's just go ahead and start over. So try parse actually takes actually has a couple of different uh, overloads. You can see them here. Uh, one that's a generic, which we will talk about later. You can tell it's a generic because of the angle brackets there. And the next one is also a generic. So we're going to end up using, if we want to use try parse here, we're going to end up using the generic version. So let's go ahead and do that. And so let me get that back. Okay, so what we need to do uh, is put uh, angle brackets after the try parse uh, method name, and then put the color type, in other words, the type that we're trying to convert. So this is essentially in lieu of having to do type of color, uh, we do it using generics, because that's the way try parse works. All right, and then the parameter that we want to convert, which is input, and then the keyword out. We will talk about in, out, and uh, ref uh, a little bit later. But for right now, this is the way try parse works. And then we put the variable name in there, in this case, paint. All right, so as you can see, this assignment now is sort of redundant. Because what this is, this part of the call right here is doing, is it's actually assigning something to paint if this is successful. So we really don't need this typecasting anymore. And what try parse returns, unlike parse, what that returns the value of the numerated type, try parse returns a Boolean. Okay, so you can see that here. In other words, it returns whether or not it was successful. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if enum try parse, etc. If that was successful, then go and go ahead and write out your get rid of this. Go ahead and write out your value. On the other hand, if it wasn't successful, we can do another write, something along the lines of, uh, let's see, that, that the input, whatever it was, was not recognized as an actual color. All right, so let's try that. It says enter color, so I type in red, and you entered red as a color. In other words, that's the happy path. So the good news is the happy path or the proper user input uh, re results in proper user output or proper uh, output to the user. Um, that's successful. Now let's try the other possibility. So I enter a color that uh, doesn't exist, at least not in my particular situation, and it says purple is not a recognized color. Okay, so those that's one way that you can deal with bad user input using uh, try parse there. Um, unfortunately, there is a caveat to this, and let me show you what that is. If you put in any number that can be represented as an integer, so for example, 100, or even something I haven't used before, let's use 111, it says that that's a proper color, and that's unfortunate. Um, so that's sort of the, the caveat, as I said, with try parse. So how do we deal with that problem? And the answer is, uh, there's still another routine, and this is enum is defined. And then it takes the type of parameter for color, and the value that you're looking for, which in this case is input. Okay. So that also returns a Boolean. So we say if enum is defined, like so, uh, and let me go ahead and move this up here because that's the line that I'm going to want. So if it's defined of that particular color, then go ahead and um, and deal with that or write that out. The problem, of course, is that we haven't actually done the conversion yet. So it's a, it ends up being a two-step process. 
So if it's defined, then you can do the try parse. Or since you already know it's defined and, and it can't possibly uh, blow up, you could go ahead and go back to the original one that we had, which was paint equals um, enum, capital E, enum dot parse. So even though we had trouble with that before, it's exactly the same statement that I put in earlier. Even though we had trouble with that before, in other words, it blew up when we put something that wasn't a recognized color. Of course, I need to convert that just as I did before. Um, we don't have that problem now because we've called the is defined. So you can use enum parse, or if you want to use enum try parse, uh, it's generic. That's kind of nice. It uses the generic syntax. Uh, a lot of people like that. Uh, you can't. So it's at that point, it's up to you. All right, so again, if it's in the type, go ahead and without fear of problem, do the conversion. And if it's not, then state to the user that something went, went wrong. And also, you might want to consider uh, writing that out to the debug window as well, since there clearly was problem a problem with the input from the user. Um, but that is, uh, that, that's up to you. All right, so let's go ahead and make sure that that's doing what we want. And again, happy path, I put in red. And red's, uh, you entered red as a color. OK, great. Run it again, something that's not a color. And it says, such and such is not a color. All right. So one last, so now we've, we've dealt with uh, getting the user, getting the color in and putting the color out. Uh, notice uh, that it, it automatically writes, uh, you know, once you've uh, assigned an enum variable appropriately, it will automatically be able to turn an enum value into a string value and write it out to the console window uh, via something called toString, which we will talk about later. All right, but there's one other thing to, to discuss, and that's the idea of case. So if you look at this enumeral, enumeral red, that's all in lowercase, and that is important. In other words, the case of the enumeral matters when we do things like input and output and stuff like that. As far as the program is concerned, it doesn't matter. I mean, you have to, you have to case it correctly because it's C-sharp. Um, but what do we do in the case where we have something that's sort of what we want, but not quite. In other words, run the program, and we know that red works, but what about capital red, capital R? It will say red is not a recognized color. So in other words, as I said, case matters. So the easiest way to deal with that problem is to take your input before you uh, actually try to do the conversion, to take your input and convert it. Lots of ways to do this. The simplest is say that input is equal to input dot, and you can say to upper, and that would convert convert all of the characters um, in the string into uppercase. But obviously, in this case, what we want is to lower, like so. All right, so whatever the user types in, it will be converted to lowercase. And as you can see, all of my numerals are lowercase, and so that's what I want. So run the program again. And I enter red, capital R-E-D, and that works. And I run it again, and enter it in all caps, and that, and that works. But again, notice that what it's done here is it has lowercased everything. So even though I type in capital R-E-D, it's going to give me back lowercase R-E-D. All right. So having said that, it is very common because this is an old C convention, to put all of your, and oops, did not mean to wipe them all out, to put all of your uh, enumerals, oops, sorry, in uppercase. Uh, well, apple, yeah, and orange. Not actually using that type, but that's okay. All right, then of course, 
your uh, enumeral value constants here, color dot red should be color dot capital red. Um, again, you're going to see that a lot. You're going to see enumerals uh, in uppercase. Uh, that's just a convention. Obviously, I already showed you that you can use upper or lowercase or mixed case if you choose to. All right, so I'm using that convention because it is very popular. And now instead of two upper or so instead of two lower, I'm going to convert it to two upper. And then I run my code. And I can type in red. I can type in capital red. And I can type in mixed case red. And again, everything's going to show up in that uppercase, which again is a, is a standard convention. But uh, you know, if mixed case or or any other situation works better for you, then you know that's fine. It sort of depends upon what your um, particular situation is. All right, you may recall that um, and, and the enumerations or the enumerals are actually represented as numbers. It turns out that uh, the default representation for an enumeration is int, so it's almost as if it was written like this. So it turns out if you want to specify a particular data type to represent your enumeration, you can specify it after the name of the enumeral or the enumeration, of, and uh, preceded by a, a, col uh, yeah, a colon. All right, so there is clearly an int there somewhere, and there may be times when what you would like to do is to get that value out for whatever reason. Now in our case, we really don't need that, but just assuming that at some point you might, how would you get that value out? And so what you can do is you can take your enumeration var variable, in this case paint, and you can typecast it or convert it into an int uh, with that syntax. There's a couple of other ways you can do typecasting, but this is the simplest one. So for example, if for whatever reason you wanted to write that out, you could say um, my paint value is represented by the number, and then we'll put this in curly braces, like so. Semicolon. All right, so we'll, now we'll see that at the end. And let's see. Oh, I forgot to put the dollar sign in front of that. Nope, not quite there. So something that looks like that. And so now we run the code. And I enter a color. And let's just do blue this time since I've been using red. It says, you entered the color. You entered blue as a color. My paint value is represented by the number 2, which is exactly what we would have expected. So if you go back to the code, you can see that blue is actually represented by the number 2. Again, that's an arbitrary value in my case. Or if for some reason it was important that the value of blue be 2, uh, you have that as an option as well. OK, so that's enumeration types. And that's what it looks like to create your own types uh, or create a, your own type based on a collection of related values.